Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. celebrate that full glory of our resurrected Lord today as we continue to hear about uh, his revelation to his faithful disciples. Uh, it's a special day here at St. Mary's as we're going to see during the sermon uh, where one of our pieces of art comes alive in church through the Holy Scriptures. As we prepare for Holy Mass this day, we will make an examination of conscience, but let us begin as all good things do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, please now make that examination of conscience, confessing your sins before our Lord and God. And having confessed your sins, please now recite with me the second confidier. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, Pray for me to the Lord our God. As an act of penance for this day and uh, for this Holy Mass, I ask that you take time in reading the scriptures this day, at least two full pages, at least a chapter or two, of uh, whatever piece of scripture you might want to. Uh, as we believe as Catholics and as Polish national Catholics that the Word of God is indeed a sacrament and that our Lord and Savior is revealed to us in that, uh, it's the best we can do at home during these times. So I ask you again to please take time in Scripture uh, as an act of penance. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you in with his authority vested in me. I absolve you from all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My eyes are ever upon the Lord, who frees my feet from the snare. Alleluia. Look upon me, have pity on me, for I am alone and afflicted. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, 
Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lord Jesus, you accompanied your sorrowing disciples as they journeyed to Emmaus. Go with us on our journey through this world. Guide us, uphold us, and make our hearts burn within us. May we walk in the strength of your presence all our days. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. now for hearing of the Word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus, the Nazarene, was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Therefore my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh too will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is still in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him, set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus. Of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father, and poured him forth as you see and hear. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for this morning comes from Psalm one, or some from Psalm sixteen. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Lord, you will show us the path of life. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you? O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Lord, you will show us the path of life. I bless the Lord who counsels me, even in the night when my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Lord, you will show us the path of life. 
Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Lord, you will show us the path of life. You will show me the path of life, abounding joy in your presence, the delights of your right hand forever. Lord, you will show us the path of life. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your, from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. This is the word of the Lord. Almighty God, cleanse my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what were you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking down past. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. And they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of us, then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but they did not see him. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, they gave the, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them, and it happened that, while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. 
With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven, and those with them who were, staying, who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised, and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. to them what sort of things these words are taken from today's gospel according to saint luke in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen you know ever since i arrived at saint mary's uh, in 2013 i always got a little pep in my step when this gospel came about um, having the opportunity to celebrate this third week of easter mass upon moving here weekday mass uh, was always lightly attended. We can't expect everybody to come every single day for Holy Mass, but every Friday I could expect a couple people uh, to come for Holy Mass. And that would be Bruno and Dorothy Tracy, both of blessed memory, unfortunately, these years later. And they would arrive, and often a few minutes after the bells rang and after I started Mass, and if it was just me, and then I would pretend to just be starting Mass when they finally came in, saying, Oh, I was running late to Bruno. I was running late to Dorothy. No worries about that. I could recall their memories today because of the front of our altar of sacrifice. And have our camera go over there while I continue to preach for a little bit. Dorothy loved the face of our altar because she was proud of the fact that she could always remember the names of those depicted on that altar. Well, in the middle, of course, there's Jesus, uh, who in this very act of breaking that bread, he's just about to break the bread, uh, is revealed as Savior to those two who are flanking him. On one side is the unnamed disciple. Some believe that he was actually a she, and that he was married to the other. Others believe that perhaps he was just some random disciple. And the other disciple, of course, was named in the gospel, and that would be Cleopas. Cleopas, not at the Last Supper, which makes it kind of neat that he was recognizing Christ in the breaking of bread. Dorothy loved the fact that even in her declining age and declining health, she could recall all those details of today's holy gospel. Another tidbit on this altered face, and we're going to keep the camera there just for another moment, is laid out uh, in our parish history that you can find on our parish's website. Uh, for a variety of reasons, our parish formed in 1915. Not here, um, actually one of our sites that was being built as a breakaway was burned down, and then another one was built on uh, further down Broadview Road. Uh, we broke away from St. Barbara's Roman Catholic Church just a couple miles into Cleveland. Ironically, as they got redecorated uh, at some point, they purchased an altar that is identical to this one, except there is no color on it. It's just sort of a, uh, uh, I don't know, a, a matted finish that's just sort of black and white. So we have that little history and that connection to our old parish that we broke away from in sharing that same altar. 
Now, those little neat tidbits aside about uh, the art here at St. Mary's and about our history there as well, there's a lot to address in today's Holy Scripture. As far as those disciples, Cleopas and the other one, were concerned, this guy was just a stranger who was joining them for their walk. They were kept from recognizing Christ as who he is. And they went through the whole spiel telling Jesus why they weren't feeling great, why they were walking downtrodden, uh, why they didn't have any pep in their step. And they were telling everything that happened to Jesus over the last couple days to Jesus. Maybe Jesus' heart was burning within it as well. Uh, is that we know somebody, when we have news that we want to tell them, but we know we just can't, we have to wait for some reason, uh, Jesus had to want to tell them right away, but there's always a plan in place. He waited because God, if anything, is patient. His revelation uh, to his gathered disciples would come in just a little while. But God opens our eyes very different ways to very different things. The psalmist in our responsorial psalm, again, Peter recalls this psalm as he's speaking in the Acts of the Apostles, says with confidence that the Lord will show us the proper path, uh, the path of life. And then, as we heard in that first reading, it continues to focus on the Acts of the Apostles, the story of the exploding early Christian church. We see Peter speaking with the wisdom of God, following the path that the early church needed to travel. Now, chronologically, at this point in Scripture, the Holy Spirit had just descended upon them all, and everybody who was sitting there just saw those tongues of fire and just heard people speaking in tongues. So it wasn't as if he was speaking to a crowd for the first time. People knew something was up, and people were itching to hear these blessed words. He was raring to go, Peter was, that newfound set of tools that come with those God-granted gifts of the Holy Spirit. And here, Peter provides, through the eyes of the Lord, the path of life for those first Christians. He explains who they represent now, and why this is an evolution of faith. Peter quotes David, then speaks to the reality that, yeah, David was great, but we know where his bones lie even today. This Jesus' bones don't lie anywhere. He still had walked with us after his resurrection. Peter lets everyone know that that path of life is clear. It's through God made manifest by Jesus Christ, beginning, middle, the end. That's it. That they were witnesses to Jesus' divinity. They got to see God walk on earth, not only his resurrection, uh, but in his ascension as well. The path to life is following uh, his teachings. The example of the Messiah whom you, the Jews, and everybody else of society had rejected to this point. That's harsh. And as cutting as it sounds 2,000 years later, can you imagine it back then? Peter yelling at his fellow Jews that they are the ones who killed Jesus that they were blinded of that path of life so much that they wanted to kill someone who, who was it and who was everything. In Peter's first letter, written some years later, uh, that we heard today, Peter reiterates that this is the path of life, that this is where our faith needs to be. It needs to lie in the glory of the resurrection, of that life that was offered once and for all times for the salvation of souls. Now, as Jesus walked this earth, making moments uh, that would be just more memorable by the day, manifestations or revelations like we call them, by an action, by his words, and by his presence, today that revelation was in the breaking of bread, something that continues on Catholic altars to this day, each time Holy Mass is celebrated. What's crazy is, I don't know what else to call it, but that glow of God is real. In the same way the Holy Spirit emboldened Peter to preach on that day of Pentecost that we heard, um, it's the same way that the hearts of Cleopas and the other disciples were absolutely burning uh, as they walked with Jesus. Think of them again. For seven miles they walked and listened to Jesus Christ. Their hearts were burning, and if we imagine when they probably walked, it was early on in the day. You wanted to avoid that mid-afternoon, early afternoon sun. They get, they break the bread, and all of a sudden Jesus is gone. 
Did you hear what scripture said they did next? They hightailed it seven miles back to Jerusalem. I'm guessing people probably ate less Twinkies and stuff back then. So I guess 14 miles in a day wasn't crazy. But I'm guessing it was borderline that. If seven miles took them two and a half hours walking gloomily on the way to Emmaus, I imagine they hightailed it back with a little more pep in their step and maybe, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes. Because they wanted to tell the rest of their brethren what they just saw and witnessed. That revelation, that path of life, shown them by Jesus Christ. Without question, Cleopas and that other disciple welcomed Jesus. And that was what Jesus would reveal to them. That was the path of life. That was them living the teaching of welcoming neighbor, welcoming a stranger, offering and inviting for a meal and for shelter. This is what Christianity has always needed to be. Believers welcoming the stranger, looking past masks that we're wearing, looking past when somebody coughs and judging them whether it was a dry or a wet cough, and looking past the public sneeze and looking past skin color, looking past politics, looking past the people who post too much online, something you disagree with, looking past predisp predispositions that our parents made us believe as well. And doing it all without a scowl, that's what Christianity needs to be today. The gift of Christ's revelation, not only in the breaking of bread, but how he continues to reveal himself to us, is a path of life Christians need to follow, who welcome the stranger no matter what, who one day have that path lead to our Creator's face in paradise. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. recite our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was born of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. The wisdom of the scriptures reveals God's plan and path of life for us as we journey with Jesus. Let us pray that his path of life may become clearer to us each day. As we celebrate this Holy Mass in the memory of our sister, Valerie Maslowski, that God may eternally shine his face upon her, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church throughout the world, during this Easter season, may Christians everywhere experience and continue to experience the joy of the risen Christ burning within their hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the proper guidance and direction of healthcare workers and a people starving for positive information during this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of our world, 
that the good news of Christ, the risen, the risen Lord, may bring social justice to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the congregation God has gathered at this altar, in this church, and online, that each one of us may recognize the real presence of our Lord and the Eucharistic breaking of bread, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord will be merciful to those in need of the healing grace of heaven. Richard and Edna Samuelson, Shannon Alvarino, Jeremy Steinbrick, Mary Colley, Eugene Began, Joan Castick, Diane Black, Daniel Morgan, Len Pryor, Emma Freshwater, Jennifer Kleps, Jack Spilka, John Raiden, Jim Giles, Tom Slumka, Kim Penny, Nina Burkett, Tana Tubel, David Micah, Anthony Grad, Richard Sasenko, Debbie Washenko. For these and all our parish prayer list, and our own, and our circle of family and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of our dearly departed brothers and sisters, especially for our sister, Valerie Maslowski. For all friends and departed members of our parish, for Dorothy and Bruno, for those who have resurrected to a new life with Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God our Father, our hearts burn within us as we listen to your only begotten Son. In peace and joy, we present, we present our prayers to you through the same risen Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. If then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated, at the right hand of God. Hallelujah. sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. God, our Father, you instill the vibrant hope in us through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, through the gifts of this altar, we, being raised with him, seek those things which are above, and be made partakers of eternal life. We pass this to the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
us give thanks to the Lord our God. Especially at this time, when he became our pastoral sacrifice, he is the true Lamb who took away the sins of the world. Through his death, he conquered death for us, and by his wondrous resurrection, he restored eternal life to us. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. And our Holy Mass continues with our second Eucharistic prayer, the canon of St. Hippolytus. And again, our tradition is that we remain standing for the Church's Eucharistic prayers during the Easter season. We give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. He was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, and to manifest his resurrection. He took bread. He gave you thanks and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. Calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant you all who partake of these holy mysteries, the fullness of the Holy Spirit for the strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever and ever. Amen. And let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. And in this time of joy and of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, we continue to have our hearts burn within us as we take the time to offer each other a sign of our Lord's peace. For all you watching at home, I encourage you to keep on exchanging those signs of peace. Take your time. I'm not going anywhere. Spiritually this day, we will pray the second communion prayer. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation, though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become my safeguard. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Amen. And I offer now the act of spiritual communion in prayer. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you, 
may I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. blessing that we bless? Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Alleluia. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you made yourself known to your disciples in the breaking of bread hath of Nahus. May we, through the same blessed sacrament, come to know you and abide with you forever. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Go in the peace of 